Did you think the games were over? Did you think that I would not finish what I started? You fools. The games are only just beginning. Well, I say that, but there's only like six episodes of My Little Ponytails left. Although before I begin, I should say I considered skipping this episode given some recent events, out of respect for the victims. But then I realised it's not an isolated incident, it's something that happens on a daily basis throughout the world. And it's actually a perfect framework for how these episodes compare and contrast. Yep, it's a double review today. Keep Calm and Flutter On begins with the main six waiting for the arrival of Princess Celestia, who is arriving with a special guest. Why did they do that? We already saw the statue when he flew in. It's like if I went... Of course, Twilight has a few words with her mentor. How could you bring Discord there? Happy Birthday Sweetheart begins with a gang swimming at Lancer's house. Lancer, bring up the music! You got it! Open up your eyes See the world from where I stand Me among the mighty You caged at my command They're practicing for a swimming competition when Teddy arrives. <laughs> Looks more like a flat tire than a carousel! He starts messing with the gang's practicing. For some reason. By throwing a rubber octopus into the pool. Lancer squirts Teddy with a hose to get rid of him. I hope you all lose tomorrow! And I hope you become glue. I realize that this is a tall order, but I wouldn't ask if I weren't confident you could get him to use magic obediently of his own free will. Celestia doesn't make love. She fucks. Hard. Celestia entrusts Fluttershy to reform Discord because... She does. Did you ever notice how Celestia's decision seems to come from nowhere? Come season 4, that'll start biting her in the ass. Celestia says she put a spell on the elements to stop Discord using his magic on them. Couple of questions. 1. What's to stop Discord from beaming away? 2. What's to stop Discord from turning one or all of the main six into stone? 3. What's to stop Discord from turning Celestia into stone, invalidating her spell on the elements? 4. How does she know the spell will work, and if she does, why didn't she use it last time? The main six released Discord from his stone statue. It's kind of funny how this is the last time the elements are used, and it's to free Discord. Fuck you, DHX! Although I'm wondering, can they choose what spells the elements use, or are they set to the individual, like Poison Joke? I mean, Discord was turned into stone when Celestia and Luna used them on him, and then again when the main six used them on him, he was turned to stone. But then again, they sent Nightmare Moon to the moon for a thousand years, then when Twilight and friends used them, they turned her back into Luna. Once free, Discord starts doing Discordy things. Discord hears of Celestia's plan to have Fluttershy reform him, which now has me question if he was aware of everything when he was turned to stone for a thousand years. Celestia, you're a monster. Discord decides to crash at Fluttershy's place, and she has a foolproof plan on reforming him. I think the key is to befriend him. The gang are at the swimming competition, and... Who the hell chose a colour palette for that judge? Was our theme for him Porta Potty? On that, is a lake really the best place to do this competition? I mean, there could be reeds under the water, bacteria, general waste, wild animals... I mean, wouldn't a pool be a better and safer place to do that? Well, since so it's the gang's turn. Although, you can see an animation error with that judge. The gang seem to be doing well, but then Clover sees a monster under the lake. Hi, uh, hi, I saw a giant sea monster! The monster turns out to be Teddy, and since they didn't finish their performance, the gang are disqualified. Although, how long was he under the water? If not that, then who let him into the water? Either way, Teddy seems to have gone through a lot of effort just for a prank. That stinks of malice. All those weeks of hard work, and for what? Nothing! Because Teddy ruined all of the gang's practices, they all say that if Teddy's going to Sweetheart's party, they won't go either. Sweetheart argues that it would be unfair to uninvite him for what he did. However, here's a point I want to make. As many of you who have followed my channel may know, I work as a courier. Well, the route I used to do had a school on it. So part of my day for four years was putting up with the abuse from school kids on a daily basis. 
The times I generally got a break from it was school holidays, apart from last summer. When this boy, I say boy, one of his neighbours told me he was 16, started following me around singing the Postman Pat song trying to get a rise out of me. I told him to stop, but of course he didn't. Then one day I had a package for the house where he lived, so I brought it up with his mother that he was following me around singing that song I had asked him to stop on multiple occasions and he hadn't. And you know what she told me? She said I should just ignore him, or I could put on headphones and listen to music, or ask my manager to be put on a different route, or I could get a different job, or I could quit my job. Yes, me quitting my job, my source of income, was a more reasonable reaction to her kids' behaviour than her being a parent. And the real kicker is, I walk to work, save the planet, and I'm often walking to work when the kids at my local school are heading for school, and nothing. No abuse, no songs, no threats of violence, nothing. So really, which is the problem? The kids or the parents that don't give a damn? And it's the same with Sweetheart. Teddy is actively upsetting the rest of the gang, her friends, and Sweetheart is just telling them to grit their teeth and bear it, thus encouraging Teddy to continue because there are no consequences. To Teddy, upsetting the gang is fun as long as Sweetheart isn't upset with him, and by the looks of things, she will never be upset with him, meaning he can get away with it. Then again, is that better or worse than Twilight's idea of dealing with Discord? I really want to have a reforming spell up and running pronto. Ugh. I'm all for teaching people to be nice to one another, but using a spell to brainwash someone to be good? That's too much, man. Princess Celestia didn't cast a spell protecting our books! She didn't cast a spell protecting your books? You? Herself? Spike? Anyone else in Equestria? Twilight heads for Fluttershy's cottage, where things have gone topsy-turvy. Not that Fluttershy would agree with that assessment. Oh, but you're wrong. We're making great progress. Seriously? Fluttershy says she's given him space to be himself, and doesn't seem to question the reforming spells when Spike tells her Discord took the pages from the books. Perhaps the ponies were the true villains all along. She decides to invite the main six over to her place for dinner with Discord to show them how much she's improved. Hang on to your elements, girls. It's gonna be a bumpy night. Sweetheart and Lancer pull down the decorations because Sweetheart refuses to choose between her friends. Doesn't that mean she chooses Teddy? I mean, the gang want nothing to do with Teddy, but Teddy doesn't seem to care one way or the other as long as Sweetheart remains his girlfriend. So, by default, by not addressing Teddy's behaviour towards her friends means that bullying her friends is okay by her. Anyway, in the next scene, Lancer invites Teddy aboard his boat. It's not mine, it's my father's, but he named it after me. Lancer takes Teddy down below, where it turns out he also invited the gang. Lancer, you didn't tell us Teddy was coming. We're leaving. And then the boat pulls away from the dock. Is that boat seaworthy? I mean, I'm no expert, but still, aren't boats meant to be solid? Also, it's a different boat from the one at the dock. Did anyone working on this watch it before it aired? I've prepared a peace treaty. It's for all of you to sign. Let it be known in the annals of history that Lancer, aboard the... Lancer, brokered a treaty between the gang and Teddy. While Bon Bon threw up. How rich is Lancer? Lancer takes Sweetheart inside to show her what he got her for her birthday. Okay, open up. Surprise! Then, I thought they were like 13, 14. Maybe when people tell me I make the main six too old in my How Old Are The Main Six video, maybe they have a point. Well, it's time for her to blow out the candles on her cake and make a wish. Isn't that a wedding cake? My wish already came true. All my friends are here. Because that's what friends do. Oh, well, I've never really had a friend before. Well, now you do. Then is disrupted by flooding at Sweet Apple Acres. You see Discord's behind all this, right? Why does her leg do that? Anyway, Fluttershy talks to Discord to see about getting him to fix the mess he's made. Well, yes, uh, very well. I will fix it. I only ask one thing in return. Yes? I ask that you never use your element of harmony against me. As a sign of our friendship. I will never use my element of harmony against you. Discord then snaps his fingers and turns Sweet Apple Acres into a winter wonderland. It's kind of weird how similar these two episodes are, right down to the judges. Discord tries to get Fluttershy to go skiing with him, but she's not too into it. Not your 
Oh. Well played, Fluttershy. Well played. At which point Discord finally fixes Sweet Apple Acres. This is actually the most genuine reformation Friendship is Magic has had, and I'm saying that even though I think Sunset Shimmer is best pony. He isn't magic's good, nor does it come out of nowhere, and even after this, the main six distrust him. Even Celestia doesn't know if she can trust him. I'll leave the elements of harmony with you, Twilight, just in case. And then, they will all be shipped with Discord at some point. I'm starting to think George Arthur Bloom was the name writers slapped on when they were ashamed of what they wrote. Then I remember Shop Talk. The problem is his writing seems to be throw a half-baked idea onto the page and hope it lines up with the moral he's trying to teach and then move on to the next episode. Unfortunately, this time he's hit on a real problem badly. Because if no one addresses bad behaviour, it'll only get worse. Today's kid harassing people doing their jobs is tomorrow's paedophile, as Bronies recently found out. A brony analyst, Toon Critic Y2K, from what I've heard, was known for harassing women at conventions, but no one ever called him out on it. Instead, they brushed it under the rug, presumably hoping no one would find out, until recently where it was leaked that he was dating someone who was underage. Which is the problem with Happy Birthday Sweetheart. Teddy is knowingly and deliberately upsetting the gang, but because Sweetheart will always forgive him, it's all fun and games to him, and he never needs to learn a lesson and continuously ups the stakes. Contrast this to Keep Calm and Flutter On, which makes not just the better episode, but the better lesson, because of one word. Consequences. Fluttershy acknowledges Discord's behaviour, but doesn't act on them because he isn't harming anyone. She befriends him. Then, when Sweet Apple Acres is flooded because of something he did, she told him she wouldn't be his friend anymore if he didn't fix what he did. And that was the moment he realised her friendship was important to him, that it was something he didn't want to lose, and thus aspired to improve himself, to be better than he was. Although, couldn't he have clicked his fingers and used a deforming spell on her? It's also kind of interesting how... Back in my And The Winner Is slash The Ticketmaster review, I said Tails' real-ish world setting made the lesson better because there was no Celestia to hand out tickets at will. Now we're nearing the end of the Tails series and the final season before Lauren Faust left, and they've swapped around because of writing. 